But all these reassuring statements have been put into question. An international coalition of scientists and activists, the International Coalition to Ban Uranium Weapons, has been collecting data and campaigning globally for the elimination of DU weaponry. Technical information offered by this group to the Belgian Ministry of Defense led to the banning of DU in Belgium's armed forces. One of its first active members was Damasio Lopez from New Mexico. Damasio learned about DU more than 20 years ago, long before it was used by the Pentagon on the battlefield. His parents' home in the locality of Socorro lay in the vicinity of a weapons test site used by the army. Almost every time an explosion would go off, we'd see a, a big, huge black cloud of smoke would go up in the air. And uh, one of the things that concerned me was that the prevailing winds would bring this cloud of smoke right over the tiny town of Socorro. And this testing site was less than two miles, not even that. My house was actually one of the first houses where the smoke would go over. And my dad would be out there in the garden, taking in the fresh air, just happy as he could be. He eventually got several types of cancers and died, and a, a really slow death and, and, a, and a very harsh one. Suspicious, Damasio began inquiring about what was behind these explosions and found out that the black clouds were produced by DU rounds. When he began questioning the safety of these tests, he found a negligent stance from his government. He was just told that there was no proof that DU was a health hazard. And yet, public interest would have required the Pentagon to prove that DU was safe in the first place before puffing it in the air. Sadly, the situation was worse than mere negligence. The Pentagon had, in fact, conducted its own studies, and these concluded that the U was actually a health hazard, as it was noted in a first Gulf War era memo from the Department of Defense. In a 1991 memo from Los Alamos National Lab, this was again acknowledged, but the only concern was that public knowledge of that fact could make DU weapons politically unacceptable. And then a voice of alert came from inside the very high ranks of the Pentagon. The chief of the Nuclear Sciences Division in the Armed Forces, Colonel Asaf Durakovich, one of the utmost authorities in nuclear medicine inside the U.S. Army. In 1991, Durakovich discovered DU contamination in urine samples from 14 sick veterans from the first Gulf War. Instead of addressing his warnings, the Army took the step of firing him and the 14 samples disappeared mysteriously. Notwithstanding, the ex-Colonel has continued independent research of DU's health effects outside the United States. I decided to continue my work because many of those soldiers were dependent on me and I started with them before I was terminated in my position. We have evidence in our own patients that their cells contain chromosomal damage and mutations. So there is no doubt that depleted uranium present in the body of American, Canadian, and British soldiers did already cause genetic mutations that are going to follow for many generations to come. But if depleted uranium is less radioactive than natural or enriched uranium, why could it be a threat to public health? To understand this, we must keep in mind a series of facts that come from the United States Department of Defense itself. In 1995, the Pentagon produced an instructional video with the aim of creating awareness among its soldiers about the toxic effects of DU. Depleted uranium dust or smoke may be inhaled. It was quite a strong warning, especially when the first recommended step in assisting a fellow trooper was to scan him with a Geiger counter. Just one little detail. The instructional was never shown to the soldiers themselves. This video sits in Washington somewhere, and it was never shown to the soldiers. We did not have any idea about this when we were being trained at uh, Fort Dix. If this information had been given to us, I'm sure... 90%, if not 100% of us, would have never entered any of these tanks. We would have stopped breathing when we uh, were on these roads, and as we passed these tanks that were burning, we wouldn't have, you know, breathed the stuff in, because we'd have known it was poison. Also in this video was... Um, 
the fact that they had the human body and it showed that you know you could breathe this stuff in and it would contaminate you it said health effects of ionizing radiation depend on whether it is alpha beta or gamma alpha is the least penetrating but is the most hazardous if it does get into the body the reason for this is that alpha particles, DU's main form of radiation, are more massive than those of other kinds of radiation, like beta or gamma rays. And this means that although alpha particles cannot penetrate deeply into living tissue, they concentrate much of their energy in the surrounding cells they immediately impact. Despite the warnings of this video, the Pentagon's official DU diplomacy gives little importance to such an inner danger saying that the human body daily absorbs and excretes uranium particles which are found in small traces in the environment all around the planet and that it does the same thing with depleted uranium particles coming from impacted DU ammunition. And yet, there are important differences. The impact of a DU shell produces high temperatures, reaching more than 3,000 degrees Celsius, which melt and atomize the metal in a cloud of microscopic particles the size of a human cell or even smaller. Such particles may be then inhaled in concentrated quantities, and their tiny dimensions allow them to either remain inside the long alveoli or cross a thin membrane which separates the lungs from the circulatory system. Once in the bloodstream, the particles can reach virtually every single part of the body. When they exit a capillary wall, they can easily become attached to the body's cells or even enter inside a body cell. The particle may likely irradiate it with alpha emissions for the rest of the individual's life. Moreover, the impact heat gives the DU particles a hard ceramic-like surface, which makes it more difficult for the organism to break them up and excrete them as it does with natural uranium particles in the environment. It should be noted that DU actually produces a small amount of the more penetrating beta and gamma rays, which adds to the alpha rays risk. And in addition to all this radiological hazard, DU particles also have a heavy metal chemical toxicity, a double danger that Walter Reed Military Hospital seems to hide from its patients. They told us that depleted uranium was so safe that they could put it on your cereal and eat it. And I said, well, you eat some, and then I'll eat some. In 2004, Dr. Alexandra Miller from the Armed Forces Radiobiology Research Institute determined in lab studies that DU particles produce significant chromosomal damage in animal cells. Often, the particles' radiation kills the nearest cells, but cells lying slightly farther are not so lucky. Their chromosomes break up, producing cancerous mutations that could likely invade the rest of the body. While only 10 electron volts are required to destroy a DNA chain inside a human chromosome, every alpha ray emitted by the DU particle hits it with more than 4 million electron volts. To make things worse, the Pentagon acknowledged in 2002 that DU ammunitions used in Kosovo likely contained even more radioactive substances found only in nuclear reactors, including plutonium. U.S. officers minimized the event saying that it was a casual contamination on the order of very, very small traces. They did not say if they were small enough as to eat them, but all the reviewed facts clearly disavow the Pentagon's first arguments. 